One week ago today, I posted a video titled, A Question No Muslim Can Answer. I vowed that if any Muslim, any Muslim in the world, any one of the world's 1.6 billion Muslims can show me one, just one unequivocal statement from the Quran where Allah says that the text of the gospel has been corrupted, I will convert to Islam. Muslims, where does Allah declare unequivocally in the Quran that the text of the gospel has been corrupted? Give us one unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran saying that the text of the Injil, the gospel, has been corrupted. Just one. If you can give us one unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran saying that the text of the gospel has been corrupted, again, I will record myself bowing down and reciting the Shahada. Pretty bold, don't you think? It seems like I must know something. It seems like I must know that even though practically every Muslim you'll ever run into believes that the Quran says that the Christian scriptures have been corrupted, this belief is nothing but a myth spread by Muslim leaders in order to keep Muslims in a state of ignorance. Muslims in the comments section, as predictable as they are, didn't heed my warning. I warned them. Now, I know that you Muslims who watch my videos don't read your own sources, let alone our sources. So all you're about to do is Google, where does the Quran say that the gospel has been corrupted? And you're going to get some verses. But before you post those verses in the comments section, try reading them. Ask yourselves, where does this verse say it's referring to the gospel? Where does this verse say it's about the corruption of the text, not about people misinterpreting the text or misrepresenting the text? How did Muslims in the comments section respond? By posting a bunch of verses that don't talk about the gospel and don't talk about the corruption of the text. Shocker. Now, why wouldn't they just quote all the Quran verses that clearly say that the gospel has been corrupted? because there are none. The Quran affirms the inspiration of the gospel. The Quran affirms the preservation of the gospel. And the Quran affirms the continuing authority of the gospel. The Quran nowhere so much as hints that the gospel has been corrupted. But something interesting happened. Muslim YouTuber Mufassal Islam posted a response to my challenge, and Muslims started sending me the link to his video. David, Mufassal Islam refuted you. Are you ready to convert to Islam? Here's the link to his video. I got that message over and over and over again until I finally watched Mufassal's video and found that he agreed with me and proved me right. Mufassal Googles the Quran verses that Muslim apologists deceptively use as they attempt to prove that some earlier scriptures have been corrupted. But Mufassal admits that none of these verses directly mention the gospel. Okay, David, I will Google it. Hmm, you are right. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. Did you catch that? He said, I'm right. You are right. I'm what? You are right. I like the sound of that. Say it three more times, Mufassal. You are right. You are right. You are right. And what was I right about? Please remind my viewers. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. After admitting that there's no verse that directly refers to the corruption of the gospel, he tries to build an indirect case by saying that the Quran tells Christians not to go to excess in our religion and that this is somehow indirectly suggesting that the gospel has been corrupted. We did an entire live stream going through everything Mufassal said. The link to that live stream is in the description box, along with the link to Mufassal's video. But for purposes of this video, the only thing that matters is that Mufassal admitted that I'm right. You are right. None of these verses refer directly to the gospel. Muslim apologists twist and distort verses to make them sound like the verses are talking about the corruption of some previous scripture, but even if they were talking about the corruption of some text, 
they don't mention the gospel. That's the problem. Verses that Muslims twist into saying something about textual corruption don't mention the gospel, and verses that do mention the gospel don't talk about textual corruption. But Muslim YouTubers weren't done. After an endless array of Muslims sent me messages saying that Mufassal Islam had refuted me, even though he actually agreed with me, I received dozens more messages from Muslims telling me that Adnan Rashid had refuted me with an even longer video. Muslims said, David, Adnan Rashid destroyed you. Are you ready to convert to Islam? Here's the link to his video. I got that message over and over and over again until I finally watched Adnan's video and found out that he, too, agreed with me and proved me right. Adnan spends well over half of his 20-minute video trying to explain why the Quran doesn't contain a single unequivocal statement claiming the text of the gospel has been corrupted. The reason, according to Adnan, is that the status of the previous scriptures just isn't a core doctrine of Islam. It's just not important. Apparently, Adnan has never heard of the six articles of faith, i.e. the core beliefs that a person must adhere to in order to be considered a Muslim. Article three is belief in the books, plural. The books include the gospel. Of course, the Muslims who are watching are screaming, yes, we do believe in the gospel, but we believe it's been corrupted. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're commanded to believe in the gospel, but Allah doesn't say that the gospel has been corrupted. Muhammad doesn't say that the gospel has been corrupted. Allah and Muhammad affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the continuing authority of the gospel. So what Allah and Muhammad tell you to believe about the gospel is precisely what you refuse to believe about the gospel. Hence, if it's an article of faith to believe in the gospel, and Allah and Muhammad tell you what it means to believe in the gospel, and you refuse to believe what Allah and Muhammad say, then you don't really believe in the gospel, which means that you don't really believe in the books, which in turn means that you don't really adhere to the six articles of faith, which means that you're not really Muslims. You're 1.6 billion apostates. After Adnan makes excuses for why the Quran doesn't contain a single unequivocal statement claiming that the gospel has been corrupted, he offers one verse that's supposed to indirectly show that the gospel has been corrupted. He quotes Surah 4 verse 157, which says that Jesus never died by crucifixion. Since Surah 4 verse 157 contradicts the gospel, the Quran must indirectly be asserting that the text of the gospel has been corrupted. We did an entire live stream on Adnan's video. The link is in the description box, along with the link to Adnan's video. But all that's relevant here is that Adnan admits that this verse does not state unequivocally that the gospel has been corrupted. In other words, like Mufassal before him, Adnan admits that I'm right. In other words, the Quran is indirectly saying that the Gospels are corrupt. This statement is not unequivocal. It is not saying the New Testament is corrupt. What was that, Adnan? This statement is not unequivocal. It is not saying the New Testament is corrupt. Did you say I'm right, Adnan? This statement is not unequivocal. It is not saying the New Testament is corrupt. Say it three more times so we can all remember. This statement is not unequivocal. This statement is not unequivocal. This statement is not unequivocal. Here's what's amazing. Muslims watch Mufassal's video, where Mufassal proves that I'm right. And they tell me that Mufassal somehow refuted me and that I must now convert to Islam. Then Muslims watch Adnan's video, where Adnan proves that I'm right. And they tell me that Adnan somehow refuted me and that I must now convert to Islam. This makes you wonder, how can Muslims watch videos that agree with me and prove I'm right and somehow conclude that the videos refute me and prove I'm wrong? It's confusing at first, but then we remember that these same Muslims open the Quran and see Allah affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the continuing authority of the gospel, and they conclude that Allah is telling them that the gospel has been corrupted. 
they conclude that Allah is saying the exact opposite of what he clearly says. You can show these same Muslims from their own sources that entire chapters of the Quran were lost, that large passages of the Quran were lost, that verses were eaten by a sheep and lost forever. And you can ask them what it all means. And they'll reply, it means that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Muslims have been trained to conclude the exact opposite of what the evidence shows. If the evidence proves up, they say it proves down. If the evidence proves right, they say it proves left. If the evidence proves white, they say it proves black. So when their YouTube apologists admit that I'm right, Muslims naturally think that they're proving me wrong. It's just what Islam does to people. Islam is a portal to opposite world. But we're patient. We're patient. So we're going to do two more live streams tonight and tomorrow. We've already been through two complete videos, videos that only proved me right. Now we're going to go through the claims of the adorable Muslims in the comments section who really think that Surah 2 verse 75 and Surah 2 verse 79 and Surah 3 verse 187 and other verses like these are somehow referring to the corruption of the text of the gospel. If I were one of these Muslims, I would probably be thinking to myself, I wonder why Mufassal and Adnan didn't use any of these verses. I might start wondering if people who actually read the Muslim sources know the context and the historical background and can show that these verses have absolutely nothing to do with the corruption of the text of the gospel. But that's just me. When it comes to the Quran, no one is sloppier in their interpretation than Muslims. They act like they have Allah in some sort of torture chamber where they can just stretch him and twist him until he confesses whatever they want him to say. The great irony here is that, in a strange way, we have more respect for the Quran than Muslims do. We tell people exactly what Allah says without distorting it, and Muslims get mad at us for not letting them distort Allah's words. In a very strange way, we're the defenders of the Quran here, defending it against 1.6 billion Muslims who are trying to destroy its clear meaning. Irony of ironies. But we're patient. We're patient. So we're going to go through the verses, one by one, proving that Allah never, not even once, asserts that the text of the gospel has been corrupted. And once we've proven conclusively that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the continuing authority of the gospel that Christians have in our possession and that Allah nowhere so much as hints that the gospel has been corrupted, what are Muslims going to say? They're going to say that the gospel has been corrupted, thus admitting that they don't really believe in Allah or the articles of faith, and thus that they're not really Muslims. They're ex-Muslims. They're apostates. The link to tonight's live stream will be in my pinned comment. Once we've finished tonight's live stream, I'll pin the link to the next live stream. We are accepting all challenges. Bring the best you've got, Muslims. And when the best you've got fails completely, maybe you'll finally realize that your leaders are lying to you and that if you want the truth, you're going to have to find it somewhere other than Islam. See you tonight.